Hi there, Chris P. Williams here with another quick Affinity Photo tutorial. And today we're going to look at creating bokeh, 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 whatever you call it. Those nice blurry circles that you get in the background of photographs with really expensive lenses. And you can create bokeh from almost any photograph. Now, a popular way of creating bokeh in Affinity Photo is simply to take your photograph, go to filters and blur and then just go down to maximum blur and then you get this artificial sort of bokeh effect which you can control with this slider um, as long as you ensure the circle checkbox is ticked or you get an alternative sort of bokeh which isn't isn't that bad to be honest it's uh, it's quite interesting so I'll click that circle but this is a simple method and it can be effective at times but not always so I won't use that in this exercise so I'll just cancel that now the method I'm going to use is um, I think it's slightly more realistic and produces better results so let's crack on with it so you take your layer and the first thing you want to do is you go to layer and you go to new live filter and we click on the lens blur filter and there's a checkbox here that says preserve alpha you want to make sure that's on and we're going to bring our radius all the way up and we can see we've started to blur our image already and the next slider down we've got number of blades and this dictates the number of blades in the aperture of our, of our lens or our, our pretend lens in this case and we're going to pump that up to nine so we've got a very high quality aperture and we're going to go to blade curvature again some of the expensive designs especially zeiss i believe tend to use curved curved blades and pumping this up again just gives us a smoother circle with regards to our bokeh circles and i can bring the threshold all the way up and the bloom factor i'm going to bring that all the way up to a thousand and the bloom color i'm going to bring all the way up to a hundred now I'm going to address the threshold again now I'm just going to drop it down to about 98, 97 you can see a few more circles of light have appeared the more you slide it down the more circles you get but you don't really want too many so I think about 97 will do but don't worry this is a smart filter um, in as much we can return to it later on and make further adjustments so we'll just commit to that now by pressing the cross and the next step now is to go to our adjustment layers and we're just going to introduce a levels layer by clicking on levels and before we do anything with this I'm going to left click it and drag it over the background layer to clip it to the background layer and this is only now affecting this this particular layer and what we're going to do we're going to crush our blacks so that we're left with mainly highlights I think that's looking quite good and now I'm going to bring my highlight slider down towards the left just to introduce a few more pokeballs it sounds like Pokemon pokeballs 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 I don't know and I think that's looking pretty good if I zoom in you can see they are looking quite round and smooth okay let's zoom back out again and again we'll commit to that for now and like I said these are smart layers a lens blur layer and a level adjustment um, which means once we copy or duplicate this layer we can go back to those and make further adjustments later on and now you're probably thinking okay what what use is this we're going to go on to a photograph here I've, I've got of a flower and we're going to return to our bokeh layer and I'm just going to click on the background layer which we just adjusted and I'll rename that while we're here and just call it bokeh 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 blurry balls and I'm going to press Control and C on my keyboard now just to copy that layer and I'm going to return to the flower photograph and I'm going to press Control and V oh it's gone black not the effect we really wanted so I'm just going to zoom out and the reason it's black if I click on the move tool you can see it's because the image we just copied is much larger than the flower image we're currently editing so you can now use the move tool to move this around and you can see that's reintroduced our bokeh and if I zoom out this allows me to increase the size now if you press control and out on your keyboard you can see it constrains the actual proportions which is what you want because you don't want those circles to turn into lemons or melon shape or whatever you want to keep them as as close to circles as possible and I'm just going to shift this around slightly before I zoom back in 
and I think that will be a good starting point. Now, here's, the, here's where the magic happens. Make sure your bokeh layer is selected in your layers palette, and then click on the drop down menu here, and we're just gonna look at a blend mode. And the blend mode we're looking for is screen. And now if I press control and zero on my keyboard, you can see the effect we've had. These bokeh balls are the balls we've just created. If I turn that layer off, you can see the effect. Okay, now one thing that's bothering me now with those balls is the color. Obviously they're red and it doesn't really sit with this photograph. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm just gonna click on the adjustment layers just at the bottom of the layers palette. And I'm gonna select the HSL, which is the hue, saturation, and luminance. And make sure you've got your bokeh layer selected before you do this. So we'll click on HSL. And I'm just going to shift it slightly towards the left just to get rid of some of that color. And you can see now what's happened is we're affecting the whole photograph because inadvertently I forgot to clip that HSL layer to the bokeh layer. So it's now affecting all layers. So that's simply fixed by left clicking on the HSL, dragging it over the bokeh layer and letting go. And it's now clipped to that bokeh layer and it's only affecting that bokeh. So those bokeh balls are the only thing that are going to change when I move this slider. So you can see I can get rid of that color or I can increase it or change it to whatever I please. I think that, that looks quite good because the blue bokeh balls sort of blend in with the background here. And I'll commit to that just by pressing the cross. And again, this is a smart layer in as much as I can return to it at any time. And I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna demonstrate that to you now. The levels layer we created earlier, I'm just gonna double click and you can see we can make further adjustments to that layer we can introduce more bokeh balls as we see fit. Increase the brightness. And I think that's looking quite good. So we'll close that. And again, with the lens blur as well, we can also make further adjustments to our bokeh balls. And of course, that's changed the um, color of the, of the balls, which um, we can adjust in the HSL layer. I think the white balls like that look, look quite quite effective. Now, if you notice here, we've got this big, bright sort of bokeh ball, which doesn't look that attractive. Now we could go to our levels layer and see if we can diminish that somewhat. And that's done a pretty good job. If that hadn't have worked, what we could have done is we can click on our bokeh layer and we can create a mask. And of course, now we're with the mask tool, we want our paintbrush and remember the black paint hides and the white paint reveals so we've got black paint and for instance where this one cuts across the the stem i'm going to reduce my brush size by using the left square bracket and i'm just going to stroke down the stem there and you can see i've taken away that bokeh ball or taken away the edge at least and left the, the rest of the bokeh ball in the background and likewise if i increase my brush size if I didn't want this bokeh ball here, I could just paint black over that on the mask and it disappears. But I'll keep that one because it did look quite effective. So I'm just going to press Ctrl and Z on my keyboard or Command and Z on the Mac to bring that back. Now, of course, if you want to create more bokeh balls, it's simply a case now of clicking on the bokeh layer, and pressing Ctrl and J or Command and J on a Mac to duplicate that layer. And you can see it copies all of the adjustment layers as well, along with the lens blur and the, the levels. And we can now zoom out again on this image and we can go to our move tool and we can move that layer around and you can see now we're creating more bokeh balls. And if I zoom out, we can even look at rotating this layer just to give it a different slant no pun intended. So I'm just going to press Control and zero now to recenter my image. And you can see there now we've created more bokeh balls in the background. I think that one there is a little bit too high. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to make sure my move tool is still selected. I'm just going to drop the layer down slightly. And again, I'm going to revisit my hue saturation and luminance slider, drop the saturation slightly. Experiment with the hue slider because you can get some interesting effects and all depends on the uh, photo you're, you're working with. 
and I think that looks quite effective. The blue with the cream sort of sort of works. And I'll commit to that. Now another thing you can do is you can vary the size of these layers. So if we click on the bokeh layer we just created, in fact, no, I'll, I'll return to the original layer because I think these ones will look better larger and that one will look better the size it is. So I'm just going to click on that layer and I'm going to go to make sure my move tool is still selected and zooming out. I'm going to press control and out and I'm going to increase the size of those bokeh balls slightly and I'm going to press control and zero or command and zero on a Mac to zoom back in. And I think that's had a nice effect. Now what you can see here, where we earlier painted on the mask um, to reveal the stem, that bokeh ball is now shifted to the right because of the increase in size. But that's not to worry because we can go to the mask and we can get our paintbrush and we can go back onto reveal, which is white. So we just press the X key on the keyboard and you can see here the colors swap from background to foreground. And I just make sure I've got the right mask selected and I'll paint that bokeh ball back in and reduce my brush size, X to swap the colors over. So now I'm black to hide. So it's black to hide, white to reveal, and we'll reveal that stem again. And I think you can agree that's done a pretty, pretty good job. What I'll do now is I'll just go down to the background layer, which was our flower layer. I'm gonna press Control and J, and I'm just gonna drag that up to the top of my layer stack, just to give you a before and after so that's before we introduced the artificial bokeh and that's after. So you can see, the, I've exaggerated the effect here just for the purposes of a tutorial, but you can see it's a very, very effective way of creating realistic bokeh balls. And it gives your image the impression that it was um, created with a expensive lens. So I hope you found that useful and thanks very much for watching and please subscribe to my channel. And if you did like this video, then please click like. Thanks very much.